In this video, we're going to review allergic transfusion reactions. In its mild form, allergic reactions are common type of reactions. They are probably caused by allergens in the components or less often by antibodies from an allergic donor. The patient may experience mild localized urticaria, puritus, and flushing. Allergic reactions usually occur within seconds to minutes of starting the transfusion. Most reactions respond to antihistamines. Severe anaphylactic reactions include symptoms of urticaria and angioedema, but can progress to severe symptoms such as hypotension, shock, loss of consciousness. So, signs and symptoms of allergic reaction in its mild form are itching, hives, urticaria, angioedema, which is swelling around the eyes and lips, and in severe form is anxiety, bronchospasm, wheezing, hypotension, shock, and even loss of consciousness. So, uh, pathophysiology of allergic transfusion reactions. Uh, patient produce immunoglobulin E antibodies specific to donor plasma proteins. Um, on the mast cell, antigen antibody complex bound to immunoglobulin E and antigen activate degranulation. Inflammatory cytokines and histamine are released leading to the signs and symptoms. This is all that mast cell can do by releasing histamine and cytokines. Uh, the most important are the blood vessel endothelium uh, can be vasodilated and um, smooth muscles on uh, GI tract will lead to peristalsis and bronchoconstriction will occur. Uh, so the mild signs and symptoms are again urticaria, puritus, flushing, angioedema, labs that can be performed, uh, no labs uh, to determine that. Uh, immunoglobulin E will be noted um, uh, after the reaction uh, has occurred. So if the patient responds to his prevention is uh, to premedicate person with antihistamines 30 minutes before the transfusion. Now, the anaphylactic reaction presents with severe signs and symptoms due to activation of C3A and C5A and donor immunoglobulin A antibodies that bound to immunoglobulin G and then bound to the receptor in the mast cell. So complement 3A and complement 5A uh, generated during the complement activation, that's when uh, uh, the antibodies bind to antigen, the complements get activated directly. Uh, bind, so this C, uh, C3A and C5A bind to the receptor on the mast cell, leading to mast cell release of the mediators and the histamine. Um, also, C3A and C5A can bind to receptors directly to the receptors on the smooth muscle cells, which is leading to contraction, resulting in clinical signs and symptoms of GI um, tract, which is increased peristalsis, which leads to diarrhea, and um, respiratory tract activation, bronchoconstriction, so all the wheezing um, and difficulty breathing, and vascular system, which is uh, vasodilation. Also, mast cells can be activated if donor immunoglobulin A bind to immunoglobulin G that is um, that it that binds to the receptor in the mast cell, which leads to activation of uh, degranulation, which is release of histamine cytokines, which lead to the signs and symptoms. So, uh, this is what the mast cell can do. And again, these are uh, blood vessels endothelium activated and smooth muscle cells activated. So signs and symptoms 
uh, would be urticarium, angioedema, hypotension, bronchospasm, wheezing, strider, abdominal pain, and vomiting. So labs that can be performed before the transfusion would be positive immunoglobulin A, there's a lot of them, um, antiheptoglobulin and anti-C4, um, antibodies that we're talking about is immunoglobulin G or immunoglobulin M, they will activate the mast cell. Uh, treatment would be uh, to administer antihistamines, corticosteroid to slow down the immune system response, and then give beta-2 agonist such as like epinephrine to vasoconstrict, increase the heart rate to prevent shock. So pathophysiology, antibodies to immunoglobulin A or heptoglobulin and C4. Uh, and so prevention would be the washed red blood cells and washed platelets. And uh, blood negative for this uh, immunoglobulin A, heptoglobulin, and anti-C4. So interventions that would need to be done in a situation where allergic reaction has occurred would be to stop the transfusion, keep the vein open with a new bag of normal saline, notify the licensed independent practitioner, and monitor vital signs. For mild reactions, administration of antihistamines per licensed independent practitioner orders uh, would be sufficient and to resume the transfusion after symptoms have subsided would be adequate. Anaphylactic reactions uh, with more severe symptoms, uh, the patient will have to receive fluids, the patient will be have to be placed in the Trendelenburg position, Administra administration of epinephrine, antihistamines, and steroids may be necessary. Important note, uh, mild reactions that characterized by urticaria is the only transfusion reactions in which administration of the component may be resumed after treatment. Uh, in order to prevent uh, these reactions, for mild reactions, premedication with dehydramine 30 minutes before the administration would be necessary. For patients whose reactions are severe, washing red blood cells or platelets may be considered. Administration of deglycerolized rejuvenated red blood cells has met with some success. For patients with anaphylactic reactions, immunoglobulin A deficient components are required. So you have just made it to the end of the video. If you found the video useful, please click that like button. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for watching and I wish you great success.